of the potential for real change. It's June the 28th. We're two days away from a price on carbon being introduced, which will see polluters like Hazelwood pay $23 a tonne for every tonne of emissions that goes into the atmosphere. We're very close to a deadline around the decision to close 2,000 megawatts of coal-fired power, which could shut polluting dinosaurs like Hazelwood and Playford and Energy Bricks. And we're two days away from the final deadline for a polluting project to have its government grants pulled, the HRL project, and we'll hear more about that from Julian in a moment. But we're two days away from taking some steps in the right direction and some really important steps and the first time we've taken steps of that magnitude in Australia. But we've got a state government determined to drag us the, in the other direction. We force change on these issues. We force change around Hazelwood. We, we're forcing change around HRL. And unfortunately, we've got to force change around a new issue. And that is the Bayview government's plans to turn the Latrobe Valley, to turn Gippsland, to turn Bacchus Marsh into the new Pilbara. It's an agenda that's shared by the Bayview government and the federal energy minister. And it's an agenda that is incredibly damaging to the climate and incredibly damaging to communities. Just to give you a sense of what this would mean for the climate, the Bayview government is currently in the process of planning a coal allocation. That is just, an, that's an allocation of coal just from the Latrobe Valley. They are telling us that there are 41 billion tonnes of accessible and economically available coal in the Latrobe Valley. They want to allocate 13 billion of them later this year. Now how much does this represent? Remember this is just the coal in the Latrobe Valley that's up for allocation. It's either already been allocated to existing power stations, is under a mining licence or is going to be given to companies, given to companies, not paid for, but given to companies later this year or early next year. Well, if this 41 billion tonnes of coal that the value government wants to allocate was burning conventional power stations, it would produce the equivalent of 333 years worth of Victoria's emissions. It would produce 75 years worth of Australia's emissions. 25 years worth of India's emissions, Bastards. 8 years worth of the US's emissions, or 5 years worth of China's emissions. This is globally significant, and this is the tip of the iceberg. This is just the Latrobe Valley. It doesn't include all the coal that's throughout Gippsland. It doesn't include Bacchus Marsh. It doesn't include coal seam gas. It doesn't include tight gas. It's the tip of the iceberg, and it's the, the thing that they're proceeding with this year. Shame. 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 So, so it's a big deal and Victoria's coal can have a serious impact on global emissions and we know that it will have a massive impact on local communities as well. 41 billion tonnes of coal is 41 times more than has been mined at Hazelwood in the past 40 years. Shame. It's the equivalent of 41 mines the size of the Hazelwood mine. Echo side. If anyone has stood at the edge of the Hazelwood mine or Luoyang or your lawn, which is falling apart as we speak, if anyone stood there, they'll realise the scale of this. There was no conversation with the local community in the Latrobe Valley. They're as sceptical or more sceptical more skeptical than us here today in the Latrobe Valley about these coal plans. They've heard it all before, they've heard the big promises, they've seen the 2002 coal allocation when we were promised thousands of jobs and billions of dollars worth of investment. Not a single shovel load of coal has been dug from the 2002 allocation. Not a single job has been created. It has been a dismal failure and the Bayview government wants to do it all again. In 2002, one entrepreneur was given 10 billion tonnes of coal. 10 times what's been mined at Hazelwood. He held on to it for about a year, sold it, made 100, 100 million bucks, and he's back for another round. We're in the middle of a six month process to try and get the, the Bayview government's internal documents and policy briefings on the coal allocation. We've been trying through Freedom of Information, we're fighting them at VCAT for those documents, and we've confirmed this week, Alan Blood, of Australian Energy Company is coming back for another another round of, a, uh, of snout in the trough, 
hoping to make another 100 million bucks, not create a single job this time around. There's other companies there, Exigen's there, True Energy might be there, Anglo-American might be there. There's some very big companies that we need to look out for. Shame, 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 shame. And we know we're not even my, uh, managing the current mines we have properly. At your lawn, in the time that this rally will take place, in one hour, while we're standing here at Parliament House, your lawn will dump two and a half Olympic swimming pools worth of water, contaminated water, into the Latrobe River. They've been given a special permission by the EPA to do that because with all the problems they've had with the mine and the river collapsing on site in, in the last month, they are now having to pump poisonous water into the Latrobe River. It breaches their normal limits, so the EPA has given them a special entitlement under the Environment Protection Act to dump water which they ordinarily wouldn't be allowed to protect, to, to dump. And of course, coal allocation, coal exports would have massive impacts on farming land, would have pipelines, would have new roads, would have processing facilities at place like, places like Western Port Bay, or if um, Exigen's plans come to fruition and they're interested in building a new port at Port Anthony. When we're holidaying at Wilson's Promontory over summer, we'd be watching the coal ships sail past Wilson's Promontory. It's a stupid plan. Thank you. <laughs> it, it's a stupid plan. The government doesn't want any scrutiny on this. They don't want any pressure on this. That's why they're refusing to to um, show us any of the documents that they should ordinarily be releasing through Freedom of Information. They're happy for the company's stories to run on the front page of the Herald Sun about how many jobs will be created. They're not happy for any of the assumptions behind those stories to be made public. So we've got some unfinished business in the next few weeks. We need to close Hazelwood. We need to close other polluting power stations and we're very close to achieving that through the contracts for closure process. We need to make sure HRL has now, has uh, 20, oh my maths isn't very good when I'm trying to do two things at once, it, it has 27 hours, 27 business hours if you include overnight to secure finance. Um, for its coal-fired power station, otherwise it's going to lose $150 million. We have a real opportunity, but once we finish this unfinished business, and in the meantime, we need to make sure that these crazy plans for damaging coal allocation, coal mining, coal export, are put to bed and we get on with the job of creating a genuinely sustainable future. Thank you. Yeah.